George, you guys knocked it out of the park. This is exactly what I've always wanted from a Transformers movie. Uh, can you talk to me about Memo's relationship with Charlie? Yeah, uh, well, for one, Memo Memo is new to the neighborhood and, and moves across from uh, Charlie's character's house. And uh, he has a bit of a crush on, on Charlie, so he, uh, he vies for her attention and ultimately gets swept up into the big uh, space alien robot adventure that is Bumblebee. I like the use of music that you guys did in this. Um, if you had your choice of a song to for Bumblebee to play, what would that song be? Yeah, I've been listening to that new Lil Wayne song, Let It Fly. Let It Fly, I can from, imagine that coming fly. out of Bumblebee. Out of the birds in July. Like he would just like be shooting stuff. So like I love Lil it. Wayne, that'd be, that'd be cool. Um, now, this is uh, this, the aesthetic of these Transformers are like the G1 Transformers. That's something I grew up with. Um, which Transformer do you think, if there was a sequel, do you think Memo would connect with uh, in, for you? Uh, I'm forgetting his name. Who was the, uh, the the medic? Remember he turned into like an ambulance? I do remember that one, but I don't remember his name either. No, I forgot his name. I, I feel like him. I feel like they're, they're, they're like nurturing type of characters. So they probably get along. Um, talk to me about Travis Knight a little bit because he was he's responsible for for giving us this this aesthetic of these old older Transformers. But talk to me about his directing style and what you learned from Travis on set. Well, for one, you know, I feel like Travis had had a great attention to detail, which I feel like he got from his background in stop motion animation. Right. And uh, he was able to use that and uh, and just communicate with me and and Haley uh, just uh, what Bumblebee was going through from scene to scene. You know, the, the care that he put into Bumblebee and uh yeah i feel like that that's that's what made travis really like the man for for the job like he just understands uh inanimate objects <laughs> <laughs> well i mean it's pretty crazy how they how bumblebee doesn't really have to speak a word but can convey emotion through his eyes mm -hmm. um for you guys on set how was how was that because obviously there's not a giant robot that you're looking at so how was that um no actually done? this one had the budget we got the you real got the bumblebee giant... from megatron he came down i saw it at the la auto show it was dope yeah. it was cool you saw him he's it's been a, around it's a real thing we just yeah it's real transformers is real obviously um so uh what was the hardest action scene to shoot because you actually do a lot of physicality believe it or not at least in in the uh towards the end of the film yeah uh <laughs> Uh, the, the action scenes, they, they were cool, man. I, I feel like uh, as far as the things that I'm in, the anytime that B is in the like car form, just because we can't drive the car, there's like a guy on top driving the car. So that's kind of scary. You're just like in a death trap with no seatbelts. <laughs> um, now I have a fan theory and I want you to confirm or deny it. It has to do with John's character. It's true, obviously. Uh, so I have a theory. So this is a soft reboot of Transformers. And I also think with John's character, this is also a soft reboot of G.I. Joe, him being Duke. What are the chances that you think that that's accurate? I feel like they like on yo, that's that there's a real chance. I yo. We're on to something. Yo. This guy. <laughs> this guy. They should hire you. Hey, there you go. Hire me. Hire this guy. He he has ideas. The future. <laughs>